Yeah, we're gonna hit this and check this out. The house is going up. Oh, that is cool. I mean, it's not fast, and I'm pretty sure this thing isn't fast in real life. So the five key opens up the arms, and the six key. Oh, oh, that sound. Yep, there's the drill. Hello YouTube, Komodo Gaming here, bringing you guys another episode of Scrap Mechanic. Today we're going to be checking out some really awesome creations as you saw from the intro. Now I do want to quickly apologize about not having a video yesterday. I was just extremely tired and I needed this just to take that one day break uh, from YouTube. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking me, or, am I okay? They know I'm from uh, Texas and they know that we had the hurricane uh, that came through and that actually uh, that affected south of me. Uh, we got a little bit of rain off it, so I am 100% okay. Uh, it is a very still a sad situation to see, uh, but I do work in the hotel industry, and we've been really busy with people fleeing the uh, the hurricane itself. And yeah, it's been just really mentally stressful, and it's just been kind of sad to see what's going on with these people. And uh, honestly, it's just it was just one of those things I needed to take just one day off. But we're back here today. We're gonna be checking out some really awesome creations. I will be announcing the new theme coming up really soon. We finally decided what we're going to do. I just need some time to build. So we're going to be doing another build here very soon and then we'll move on to our main theme world. And that should be hopefully the beginning of next week, somewhere right around there. So anyways, let's jump right into this creation. Okay, so we're going to be checking out a survival house here today. Now you're probably asking yourself, well Komodo, survival is not out yet. Well, that doesn't keep people from actually building these, and I kind of want to build a survival house myself. Uh, something that I can plan for whenever the farm bots do attack and we need some sort of defense. So yeah, this was sent to me by Level 10 Gamers. They have a YouTube channel if you'd like to check it out. It's linked down below. They do play some scrap mechanic on there. And they sent me this creation, and I have to say, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, you can see behind the big wall, there's actually a modern looking house there but it has some really cool features on it. So, as you can see from the spider web, it is quite insane. Uh, anybody that plays Scrap Mechanic knows what's on the bottom of this house, and it does something very, very special. We're about to discuss- Oh, I just put a hole in their wall. I am- I'm really sorry about that. Okay, I'm playing with the new mouse today, so uh, I gotta get used to it. But yeah, they have a, uh, a wall that surrounds the whole house here. So it's like an outer defense wall here, so if farm bots were to come up and try to get into it. Now, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, what are, farm bots, what are farm bots used for weapons? Are they guns? Are they saws? I don't really know. Uh, hopefully this wall will actually, will actually hold up here. But yeah, let's go ahead and ring the doorbell. We're totally not a farm bot here. So yeah, he's got a mighty doorbell there. You can ring that. And he's got this little outer shell. Now this is like a, I would say a three-step gate here. So the first step is this outer shell that he's got on here. Now if we were to click this button right here, which hopefully farm bots can't click buttons. Uh, give it a second, a timer's gonna activate. And I'm gonna try to show you what happens. You can see that just backed off there. Actually, no, we need to reactivate this. Uh, I had it pressed earlier, so. All right, timer's gonna start up, and you see there is a light up there. And it's gonna cross over a sensor. It's gonna start a timer. I better step back a bit here. And the door is gonna actually open. I'm gonna call this like a shell. So the shell opens up here. We can walk into here. Looks like it's on like a free bearing and a piston. I've seen a lot of people do this with uh, garage doors. And you know, we actually haven't checked out a house or anything in a while, so that's why I'm excited to do this here today. But it's actually kind of neat. So yeah, you've got that shell that opens up. So you're at the main gate now. Now, what we need to do here, we're just gonna hit this switch, and guess what? There's another gate. There is three different setup, or three different things here that have this little house on lockdown. So, got the outer shell, you've got the door, and we got this gate. So, let's go ahead and hit this. And, oh, that's actually kind of neat. That reminds me a bit of, a, I think Spy had a Fallout shelter that had a door like that. They could actually roll it away. And I think Scrapman's got one on his uh, latest suspended mountain base. That's uh, kind of neat. So I'm assuming we can lock all this back down. There's the door there. There's the lock. And uh, let's see. How do we close the outer shell? Is there a button? There's a button here. 
but the button seems to be behind something. But it does look like it's connected to the gate that connect is connected to the outer shell, but there's a way to activate that. Actually, looks like it's protected. I can, like, hit it from there. Actually, we'll just duck. There we go. Alright, so that should be shutting that outer shell. So, here's the house itself. It's got a nice modern look uh, out of it. It's kind of made, oh, it looks like it's made completely out of wood here. Uh, not bad looking. It's got a lot of space. It's actually got a lot of features on the inside. A lot of random rooms. Uh, looks like over here we've got these little pod escape vehicles if we need to escape out of here. Kind of curious. These look a bit like the Brent Batch vehicles. I want to say they are. We might have to try these out real quick. Uh, I think he said on his uh, email that he was inspired by some vehicles on the workshop, so I don't think these are completely original. Uh, I'll try to get the uh, creator of these on the or in the description here. But yeah, we've got escape vehicles over here. There's a little generator room, which we're going to check that out here in a second. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and check out the house itself. So we're going to walk into here. And we are on the main floor of the house. Now, now keep in mind, this is like a house slash survival little area. So what we're going to do here. Now this is where it gets neat. Uh, are these lights or are these the pistons? Up here, I think we had some lights. So you got your outer lights up here. Turn those on. Uh, this little switch right here. And which I really wish I had a view of the outside of this house. We'll probably have to hop out and hit it. But yeah, we're going to hit this and check this out. The house is going up and up. This is cool. You got a little bar locked down. So if farm bots are attacking, you can elevate yourself above them. This is really awesome. This is a good idea for farm bots because it doesn't look like they can fly. So we can actually get ourselves off the ground. And I like how it raises the whole house above the outer wall so you can actually see out. Now all we have to do is add some turrets on here and this would be the ultimate survival house. Uh, that maybe, maybe make it out of metal. Maybe have an outer metal shell or something. But other than that, really pretty cool. So, anyways, uh, let's check this house out. It looks like over here, actually, I think I read about this. This is actually a little patio that we can fold out. So let's hit both of those. And there goes the patio. This is uh, partially a piston house, too. It's like a piston survival house. Uh, it looks like he's got the pistons loaded in the side of the wall there. Pushes out this awning. The light's cut on. It's actually really bright. You've got a nice little area you can look out here. I want one of these on my survival house. I really do. This would be cool to have. This would be like one of the first features on the survival house. Have a nice little lookout deck. Or you can have a barbecue out here. And it depends on what kind of survival person you are. So yeah, uh, you can somewhat see that the house is standing up. We'll jump down here in a second. And I'll show you just how... Uh, that's done and I'm pretty sure this is why the house is made out of wood uh, if not you would think alright survival house needs to be made out of metal but the whole fact that the house raises itself up now if you use modded pistons you might be able to get away with the metal house I'm not 100% sure but anyways uh, what's this over here there's it's like it's wanting me to look at this area uh, I'm not really sure maybe this is like a TV area it feels like there's something secret in here or it just could be a it could just be a bathroom yeah, it looks like we got a bathroom in here. Let's go ahead and turn on the lights. Let's get air. Okay, those are on a, a gate there. So get the lights on. Uh, not much to look at here. It's just a bathroom. Got a little walk-in shower. We've got a big window. You can see out the back. This is actually in a, a really nice area. Uh, let's see. Let's go over here. It looks like a uh, little bed area. You got a bedroom here. Nice. Once again, you can tell that he's having to use wood for pretty much everything. Like all furniture. Uh, just to try to keep this house as light as possible. Hopefully a scrap mechanic will allow us to have heavier pistons or maybe a heavy duty piston at some point. But it could be tied into survival and that's why it's uh, the way they are right now. But still pretty cool. You got another bedroom over here. It's got a view out the front. Uh, let's go over to the side here. Now there's some stairs. You got some glass stairs up here and we're going to walk up to the top. So... Technically, it's like we're on the third story now. It's like you had the the first story was like down there. This would have been the second. But now it's the third since we're up in the air. So, get a little survival kitchen here. Now, let's see. What? Oh, I think I read about this. There's, an, there's a dance floor in here. Because there's nothing like survival and... Oh, that's the radio. I don't want to listen to the radio and scrap mechanic. So, yeah, you've got like a little survival area and you've got a dance floor. you got to keep the morale up. Got to go under here and you got to party a little bit. Oh, that's actually really distracting looking. Wow. 
All right, so we have a dance party. Could you imagine being a farm bot on the outside, just seeing all the flashing lights and people were just in here partying, ignoring the whole fact that we are in a farm bot apocalypse? So yeah, that's a thing. It's pretty cool, actually. I like the way that's done. This is just uh, pulsing on probably little timers. Actually, the timer's under here, I believe. Uh, let's see. Yep. Well, it's just pulsing, actually. So you've got that. Uh, I've got a couple little secret doors here. Let's go ahead and hit these, open these up. Ooh, I like that one, actually. So yeah, this is a little YouTube studio. So you got to keep the party rolling here. Let's go ahead and turn all these on real quick. And I'm going to turn off. I'm hearing like a, something go off here. So let's turn those off real quick. So yeah, he's even got a little YouTube studio in here. You got to keep producing those videos, even though everything's gone wrong. You got to stand behind your green screen. You got your camera back here. It's actually a green wall. I need to paint one of these in real life. I'd, I'd like to actually have some sort of green screen set up. Uh, probably be something like this. So you got a standing desk here. Looks like he's got uh, some equipment supplies on the other side. Uh, pretty cool. So we've got that. Uh, what's this here? More lights. And this looks like a... I guess you can call this a home theater area over here. Oh. Oh. Oh, what is that? Oh, that is really cool. All right, so it kind of dims the lights. You can see you got a little, uh, actually it's on each side. That's pretty cool. It's got like a, uh, you can probably use it for two things. It's a protective shield and also, you know, don't let in all that light when you're watching these movies. So you got that, you got a projector up here. Pretty awesome. I'm actually really, really satisfied with looking at this house. There's something about using all these pistons, the whole fact that we're elevated off the ground. Uh, really cool house. I'm gonna hop out the side. Let's actually hop off the deck here. I'm gonna show you guys. There is the setup under here. He's got all the pistons in the ground and you can see them all extended here. Pretty cool actually. I like the way this is done. It would be cool, like I said, to have this done in some sort of metal, but obviously uh, the pistons will not allow that right now. But yeah, I think this is probably one of the first like suspended piston houses. A lot of them I've seen just have like little secret doors. Uh, Moonbow's done a really good job with his, has like these little furniture parts that come out. But this is the first one that actually raises itself up, so definitely awesome. Alright, we are ready to fold this house back up, so I'm gonna hit the top switch, bottom switch. The top's already folding in. Here comes the bottom, it's gonna fold up against the house. Uh, we're gonna walk over here, let's go ahead and exit. So the, uh, the danger's over, or say we're trying to escape actually. We're gonna hit this switch, here we go down, the big... Uh, locks coming up off the door and it's gonna pop open there we go I like how it folds down in this little he's got like a border area around this and it kind of slides down in there so yeah we are ready to escape I'm uh, gonna go check out a couple more creations here let's hop into this and I'm assuming this is basically a uh, yep that feels kind of like a Brent batch flyer oh oh yeah yep we are gonna escape the house actually you can get a little view of the house from up here uh, let's fly back over in this area. It's let off a bit. I love these little flyers. Uh, these are so useful to get around. So yeah, you've got that. You can see the top. Actually, you can see some of the, the works up there where he's got some of the piston areas uh, that float out and, or actually fold out. So you can see all that. And oh, almost forgot. Almost forgot. He's got a little power slash server room over. Uh-oh. Oh, I did not mean to do that. All right, those two didn't like running into each other. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's grab that off the, uh, on the lift here and stick it over to the side. There we go. Delete that and let's check out the server room real quick. Alright, well you're still, uh, have to run some sort of infrastructure here for the house. Your YouTube career, even though the, uh, FarmBot apocalypse is happening. Still gotta open this up. We got a power room in here. This could be the server room. I, I don't really know. I, I've been in, like, one server room, so I don't know what they look like. But yeah, hit this switch over here, kind of like a little secret switch that'll open up this side. And I'm assuming, yeah, this is probably the power generator side on here. And then this is like the server side over here. I'm actually really curious if we're going to have any sort of management of power when it comes to survival. That could be something that would be cool to have like a generator room like this. But definitely cool house. Level 10 gamers. I want to thank them for sending that over for me to check out. But anyways, let's jump on to the next creations. Okay, so we are ready to check out two more creations here. Now, these are really awesome looking. These are made by somebody in my Discord. His name is Zombie1919NL. And he's got two different pieces of heavy-duty equipment. Uh, this is like a, a drill, or I would call it like a mobile drill. This thing actually drives itself around. 
And of course you can't drill anything in scrap mechanic, it's all completely cosmetic. But this is actually really awesome, we'll go over the description here in a second. And we've got another big piece of equipment over there that's actually one of those big tree cutters or log cutters. Uh, so we'll check that out here too. But first, let's focus on this. Now this is a Caterpillar MD6420C rotary blast hole drill. Obviously, we can't actually drill holes here in Scrap Mechanics, so have to do a little bit of pretending here. Uh, it gives a brief description about how this works. Uh, the one key is the leveling feat. The two, three, four keys are the drill tower itself. And it seems it moves in like 10 degree increments each time. So if you need to move it back and forth. And then three starts the drill up. So let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, let's see. What do we need to do here? That's actually kind of cool looking. It looks like it has tracks down here. Uh, some switches on the side. It looks like a little storage area. I really wish you can use the little ladders here in Scrap Mechanic. They really need a ladder block. So yeah, let's just go ahead and climb up on this. And I'm curious, how does this thing even drive? Uh, looks like the operator possibly sits here. Uh, this reminds me a bit of like a, an oil drill. Uh, we learned a lot about these. I actually, I uh, went to college. I was going to do stuff in the gas and oil field, and then it kind of crashed out once I got out. Uh, but yeah, uh, this reminds me of something like that. You got like a little lock table here. Uh, the drill feeds down. I think this whole system moves, if I'm not mistaken. So this is going to be cool. Got that. Looks like back here could be the power source. Looks like it's got a little, uh, maybe an area for water over here. Uh, ooh, what's this do? Let's go ahead and hit that. Okay, that looks like it exposes the engine. Let's go ahead and look at the spider web here. And Oh, there's a lot going on. Actually, this makes it where you can go down the whole thing. Climb under. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's cool. So is this the drill bit here? This looks like the drill bit. He's even got it to where it spins under here. There's so much detail going on. Even though this is something that you're not going to see unless you climb under here. That's uh, actually rather impressive. So uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, this is going to be kind of hard to climb out. There we go. It's going to hit this button here. Let's close all that back up. Let's go into the operator cab here. Uh, this is actually really cool looking too. It's uh, detailed. Uh, check this out. You've got all the little controls, buttons, switches. you got your little onboard uh, computer here. Uh, most likely you would have people outside working. I'm assuming this works kind of like a, the same way a oil drill works. They feed pipe down uh, depending on how deep you're wanting to go. So uh, let's go ahead and hop into here. And does this thing drive around? Oh, that is cool. I mean, it's not fast and I'm pretty sure this thing isn't fast in real life, but it actually, oh, it turns and it drives. It turns really slow, as you can see. So, if, say if I'm going to the going to the right here, and actually, am I hearing that right? Yeah, I'm hearing a sensor being covered. I have a feeling this is like an AD steering. I don't hear any thrusters trying to assist this thing, so I think it is completely working off the wheels that are tucked in. Let's see if I can get a view of those. You can somewhat see them here. But yeah, uh, I think it's using some sort of AD converter because I can hear the sensor go off a couple times when I hit the A and D controls. So yeah, say we're going to get into position. We're ready to drill a hole here. Let's see how this works. Oh, you can actually see some of the movement from the drill when you stop. It kind of sways a bit. All right, so the one key is our locking feet, or I guess we can call it support feet. Yeah, you can see them right there. Uh, let's go ahead and hit that again. He's got them on pistons here, so they come down. Keep it to where the drill is not going to move. Were there some? Okay, there is some in the back here. So you get four of those. And the one, actually the two, three, and four keys all work together. So say if we were just to hit one, uh, this would adjust the drill itself. So say if we're going to drill, I guess, down at an angle. So that's 10 degrees there. Here's an additional 10 degrees with the uh, three key. And we have an additional 10 degrees with the four key. So if we're drilling down at an angle... So yeah, say we're ready to drill here. I'm getting a little bit of lag, but this thing's actually kind of massive. And there's a couple, there's quite a few bearings on the inside of this. Uh, so say we're ready to drill here. So we're going to hit the 5 key. I can hear it activating, and we've got this little board that comes out the side. And I believe this actually tells us how deep we're getting. So you, it's actually got like a, the top being the grass layer. And it's like... Oh, that's kind of cool. Even though it's completely cosmetic, it's like showing how far we're starting to go down. So we're breaking through the grass, that top layer, getting down to kind of the dirt and sand. Looks like we'll get down to the harder stuff. Uh, what happens when it stops? I'm assuming. Can we see in here? 
Uh, let's actually hop out of the cab while this thing's going. I'd like to see under this thing and see it working. This is kind of hard to hop out of. Let's open that door here. So you can hear it going. Uh, and you can see there's the little... Actually, those those are just timers. We've got those going. Let's go open the side up and see if we can see the drill itself. Even though this is completely cosmetic, I really like the way this thing works. Let's go ahead and pop this open here on the side. See if we can get a, a view of the actual drill itself working. So that's going to pop open. Uh, let's climb down here. And yeah, it's just spinning. You're just getting that effect, that sound of those spinning. Oh, oh shut off. Does that mean we are as far as the drill can go down? Let's go check that timer over there. I'm kind of stuck on the inside. And yep, the timer is full. We are fully drilled down into the ground, and we now have a hole. Which, we really don't. But we do. You know, we're just kind of pretending here. Oh, that would be awesome to have terrain that can actually uh, be deformed. So yeah, that is cool. I really like this. I will link this creation down in the workshop along with the next one we are about to check out. Okay, so the next creation we're going to check out is the Caterpillar 573D Feller Butchner? Uh, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, this is kind of like one of those big log cutting or tree cutting uh, vehicles. And it just kind of gives a brief description about how this works. This one's actually got more controls here. You've got uh, the main arm is the one and two keys. It uh, looks like the SC57 head, which I'm assuming it's the red attachment. You make can go up and down, open the arms to grab... Uh, I guess a hold of the uh, the tree and the six key starts the blade and the seven key I believe is the doors for the cab so let's check this out real quick uh, it's actually quite nice looking I've been sent some construction equipment before we checked out a Kramer or Kramer uh, boom loader not too long ago and that was actually really cool looking so this kind of looks the same way let's go and pop open the side here up oh, get a modular seat or a seat block here let's try to hop up into that here we go Alright, so let's close the cab doors here. Let's go ahead and hit that. See how this thing drives real quick. Uh, yep, that was having a feeling that was going to be the way this thing steers. There's actually a bearing right on the middle of it. So you can see the front wheels, the whole front end just shifts over and that's how this thing actually turns in real life. And I've seen this done a, a couple times on Scrap Mechanics, so that's pretty awesome. So yeah, I think the actual part here in the front is just an attachment. So you would attach this, say you're going to clear out some forest, or maybe if you're just going to maybe chop some logs down or something. I've actually set up a little piece up here, that way we can try to test it on it. But I better go ahead and learn the controls real quick. So the one key raises it up. Uh, I'm assuming that's on either a controller. Yeah, I think it's on a controller and actually sets. So we can hit that. The two key will put that down. So that, yeah, that log's about that high over there. So we'll hit that. So you hit the three key, tilts it down. To say if we were to grab a hold of it, we probably want to hit the four key to hold on to it and lean it up. Let's go ahead and get that level here. There we go. Okay, so that's level. So the five key opens up the arms and the six key. Oh, oh, that sound. Yep, there's the drill, which I think, is he using a rim? Yeah, he's using a rim from one of the mod packs. That's actually kind of cool. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and turn that off because I have a feeling that drill would fling the object we're trying to pick up. So I've got a piece of wood over there. Obviously, it is not attached. It's going to actually be loose. So all we have to do is just kind of line our nose up here. And yeah, this could be another survival element and scrap mechanic. Maybe uh, we'll have to cut down the trees to produce the wood blocks. So we're getting close here. Oh, oh, don't tip over. Don't tip over. Okay, so let's hit that. Let's get a little closer here. Let's hit that five. Oh, that's out of reach. Okay, that log is too big for this. I might need a single uh, block wide little log here. So let's go ahead. Let's turn that off. I'm going to hop out of it real quick and I'm going to set another one up here and see if we can get it. Okay, take two here. We have a skinnier log. It's more like a little twig or something. Uh, we're going to pick this up. I just want to see if we can just wrap around it. Actually, we need to adjust... Uh, let's adjust that down a bit. There we go. I saw in his thumbnails, his pictures, he could actually lift stuff up, which I'm pretty sure you can. You just gotta be able to grab it right. Up, oh, up. Oh. Alright, here we go. Get a little bit closer, and can we lock onto it? Come on, come on, there it goes! Alright, so, I don't know if we're gonna be able to hold on to this, but we're gonna try to. Let's go and tilt that back and raise that up. There we go. So yeah, we totally chopped that down. That that worked. 
Now, I was reading in the dev blog, which I, I hear that they are going to have destructible environments to an extent. Uh, I hear a lot about the warehouses they're going to be adding. The interiors on those are going to be, be destructible. But I also think the creations that you create will be destructible too. So in theory, this would actually work if you were using it for some sort of, uh, say you're just going to chop apart your base or something. Uh, maybe they'll come out with some sort of weapon, like a chainsaw or some sort of little... Uh, saw or something where you can cut away at things. That would be really, really awesome. But yeah, I definitely want to thank Mr. Zombie1919NL for sending those over. I do want to thank Mr. Level 10 Gamers for sending over that survival house earlier. Uh, if you want to check anything out, all the links are down in the description. I've got Level 10's uh, YouTube channel and Zombie NL's workshop. But anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this little episode here today. We will be coming up with a creation episode this weekend, and then we'll start our new big theme coming up at the beginning of next week. I just needed a little bit of time here. We have been absolutely, like I said, busy. Uh, it's going to get better, though. Uh, we'll get a little less busy, but right now it's just kind of one of those times where we just got to focus, or I've got to focus and do my in-real-life job at the moment and get that done. So anyways, folks, hopefully you enjoyed the episode here of Viewer Creations. If you like to like and subscribe, everything helps my channel. I've already flashed up the email on screen if you want to send over any creations. You can do it that way, or you can join my Discord, which is also down in the description. But yeah, hope you guys have a great day, and we will see you guys next time on Scrap Mechanic. Thank you!